How do I start this thing? Have you plugged the bloody USB in? Yeah, it's in. Nah, man, that's the wrong port. Oh, wait, it's flashing now. Is it? Re- oh, wait, it's recording. Well, let's start this thing. Full. Hello, everyone. I'm Amelia. Hi, I'm Sam. Welcome to Ask the Duo podcast, a podcast where we get deep into those late night, unfiltered conversations. We'll be discussing all things lifestyle, relationship, mindset, and more. All right, let's get to it. Hello, welcome back. Hello. It is mid-August. Dude, the year has gone through so fast. Yes, it has. Time just moves fast. Do you feel like time seems to go faster as you get older? Like, each year seems like it gets faster and faster. I don't think age dictates that, but yes, time does go faster as you're busier. So, like they say, the busier you are, the more fun it is and the quicker the time goes. Time flies when you're having fun. Today we've got a pretty in-depth and deep, meaningful conversation. It's actually requested by one of our listeners and for us, we really love doing quizzes and this listener requested us to do this quiz, which we've actually never seen. It's about your attachment style. Yes, attachment style. I actually Googled it, and apparently it's actually really popular, so I was surprised I didn't actually know about this. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever heard of it. I've never seen it before, so I mean, it's it's quite interesting as to how they analyze the data and, and how you answer the questions and that sort of stuff. Yeah, let's jump straight into this. What is relationship attachment styles? What is that all? Well, reading it, my understanding is that, well, actually, let's let's take it back, so it's actually a quiz or a style that a psychiatrist that came up. His name is John Bell Belby. It was a style that he developed or gathered back in the 1950s. And his theory behind this is that it's actually a attachment style that develops during your early childhood. And it's actually formed between your first year of living. So typically between 7 to 11 months, which to me, I feel like that's really young for... That's too early. Or just a human or like a baby to even develop... Any understanding. Characteristics to understand what their attachment style is. But I guess psychologically, it kind of makes sense because when you're a baby, you have, when you say, like you've got no abilities to take care of yourself, right? So you only rely on that person who's looking after you. So I guess like from that moment when you're born, there are some sort of attachment or things that you pick up as you start to grow and develop your brain and receptive neuro, whatever scientific word you would call about learning behaviors and things that happen in your life. Mm. So yeah, that's like what it is. So it's just things that have or attachment styles that shaped and developed in your early childhood and It may be something that mirrors the dynamic you have with your relationships as you grow older. And it's just how you respond to relationships. I don't know, you explain it. I can't English. How your upbringing from obviously your parents throughout a certain period of your early age has any relation or effect to how your current relationship is now? Yeah, and it's like how secure or stable you feel with your relationships. Yeah, I mean that's that's in in the total gist. That's yeah. in theory what it's. Yeah, and like these results, so you get four different types that you can fall into, but it's not saying that you fall a hundred percent within that. Like it could be a range or an average that's between these four different types. So the four different types that like you can get is dismissing disorganized secure and preoccupied yep what did you get well my test i actually fell into the secure yeah attachment i can definitely see that though like you're you're just very secure and comfortable in your own skin like just as a person yourself so i feel like that kind of makes sense but for me mine sounds like a mess i got disorganized slash fearful avoidant which is just another name for it. Disorganized. Um, yeah, disorganized is like the general name for it. 
But I have to say, I didn't actually know how to take this quiz properly because if you've done it before, or the one that we've taken was off, what was the one that we took it off? Attachment Project? Mm, that's the one. Yeah, that was the one that we did it off. And the questions were around early childhood and obviously my early childhood. It has a set of questions for your mother or the motherly figure and then your father and the fatherly figure. And early childhood, I had two motherly figures and my experience and views and how I felt about the two different motherly figures were quite different. So it's like, how do I answer that question? Like, yeah. How do I answer these Questions because it has a scale from like strongly disagree to strongly agree, like just like every other quiz. Yeah. But I can't average it out because then my answers don't match. Like, say I say I have mixed feelings about it, or I strongly disagree with one, but I strongly agree with the other one. I can't just average it and just choose the middle. Yeah, because your two motherly figures were different to each other. Yeah. Just different experiences, different people, and just having. There's two motherly figures as opposed to just having one mum. It's hard. Yeah. So I don't know how accurate my answer is, but some of these things that came out of it, I can understand why they gave me these answers. So do you think any of these answers did affect or this result did affect your relationship? Like, do you, can you see a correlation? So yeah. let's um actually... Before we go deep diving into these questions, let's explain a little bit about what it means to be in a secure attachment. So the secure attachment style in an overall perspective is favorable view of myself. So I have a direction, a clear direction. I self-initiate a purpose. Mm. So if there's something that I am quite confident with, I will push forward with and I will actually be quite assertive with that approach. Mm. And I think it's also you just you're just very secure and comfortable with yourself. Like you you don't ever look down on yourself or Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. So outside of that it's you know, I'm aware of my emotions and I'm confident and capable of actually expressing mm. those feelings. So I am quite comfortable with proximity and relationships in general. Yeah. But do you think that really is a big part of it is because, you know, your parents were very supportive, they listen, they're very open. Because in the past, like, we've had podcasts about how, like, your parents or talking in your family, you guys are quite open. So do you think that's actually had an effect on influence on how that is? Yeah, look, to be honest, I think, I think it definitely had some degree of, influence but i also feel that like upon taking the the test i like the questions that you were mentioning before like yeah i could answer them confidently but at the same time comparing myself to being back then i was a different person mm. i was i felt i was less confident i was there was a point where i had to go well okay i have to be serious about life but was there a certain event that happened to make you think that or did you just, I don't know, were you just sick of what was happening in life and you just needed a change or? <clears throat> there was a combination of events. So probably after my dad passed away, made me realize that I was immature and I didn't take life serious. Mm. And then obviously after that, it was, you know, you have relationships, you have things and, and stuff like that that mm -hmm. fuck around or whatever. And that sort of makes you realize, well, what am I doing kind of thing. And outside of relationships, it's like your professional world, like you're studying, what your job is, what are you planning to do? Like there was a point where I said, well, where am I going with life? Mm. Yeah, no, I can see what you mean. Enough about me. So what about yourself? I am a mess. <laughs> I'm you're disorganized. A mess. <laughs> Fearful, avoidant. I know, I'm just looking at, so it gives you a little graph with a quadrant, so four different things, and I think the four is the four different types, right? Dismissing, attachment, disorganized, secure, and preoccupied. So, my and it gives you a score. I think we tried to Google this and figure out, it gives you a score, and we think it's out of seven, so it's like from strongly disagree to agree, and there's like six 
or seven. It's six from both scales, but then you have neutral, which is your seventh. Yeah, and then the my motherly figure or attachment is definitely in the disorganized quadrant. My fatherly one was in between dismissing and secure, and then my partner one is completely in the secure one, which actually makes sense because I don't feel any of those other insecure kind of attachment styles. But then it gives you an average, and my average sets back into the disorganized side because of you know different scales. Yeah, again, I don't know how much... I can actually read into this because of just the conflicting and the just the situation I had from growing up. And from a very, very young age, I know it says these are shapes. These are styles that are shaped and developed within your 7 to 11 month of age. But even then, I was already going through this stuff like as soon as I was born. So it could be something that has affected my life and how I see things and how I am attached to relationships. Mm. Uh, But yeah, in a nutshell, the disorganized attachment people, they are often displaying contradicting behaviors or they just show patterns of internal conflict. So it's just like they don't understand how they feel, they don't know what they're feeling kind of thing. Or there are some situations that can make them feel a certain way but then some a similar situation but slightly different they can feel something conflicting which I can in a way relate to that because for the longest time I I don't know if it's the same thing but yeah there was one question is like does your parents your mother your father make you feel heard or make you feel like they care about you and stuff like that but growing up in a very typical Asian upbringing most of the times your emotions are very insignificant to them. So if you feel sad, you feel angry, it, they don't care. Like, it's not that they don't care. At the time, they're so strict to the point that it's like, don't cry. Don't get angry. Like, don't yell at me. And it's like you're trying to express yourself, but you can't. So those are the things that has made me feel conflicted because, one, I'm like, okay, I shouldn't cry. I shouldn't feel angry. I shouldn't feel sad. And two, you can't talk back to your parents. So it's like, I can't say anything. And then three you don't want to be disrespectful so all these things come up before i even think of how i truly feel like does that make sense yeah i mean <clears throat> sorry just to add on there it's similar to me too because i saw that question about parents like your mom and your dad yeah and that's the same thing for me too because in the upbringing that i had you couldn't do the same thing like it's you can't express your emotions yeah yeah like that meant shit fuck all to them kind of thing. Mm. So yeah, I I do agree where you're coming from that. Yeah, so I think it's just been so ingrained in me to the point that I like you know if someone had a really bad situation that happened to them, the first thing they would do is kind of like think about how they feel. They first thing they'll come to is like, "Oh, I feel really disappointed or I feel really sad." Mine is not that. Like the first three prerequisites that I go through is like should I be feeling sad? I shouldn't be feeling sad. I need to hold my tears back. Why am I feeling angry? I shouldn't feel angry towards this person. And then three is like, am I being disrespectful because now because I'm feeling sad or disappointed or angry? So all of these thoughts come through first. And then once I pass all that, then I'm like, okay, no, I'm actually really sad. Or I don't even know what I'm feeling because I've held all this back. And now like, I've never truly understood what sad or disappointment feels. So you don't know that you're feeling that because you don't know because you've just held it back so much that you don't understand what you're feeling, if that makes sense. Yeah, you've just had that all ingrained Mm. into, I guess, your lifestyle. So as you're feeling certain things now, that's your default answer. Yeah, and with this result that it came with common signs of my style of attachment, And it was saying that I can feel clingy at times, but then there are other times where I'm completely dismissive. So I guess MIA or like I don't need anyone. So it's a bit of both. And then with intimate relationships, I desire for love and intent for love, but I'm also scared of finding love. Like 
either because I'm scared that I'm not worthy of it. I'm scared of being abandoned or whatever. But I, as a person myself, I truly do want to seek a true relationship. Mm. Um, so, yeah, these are some of the common things which I don't really agree on, like especially the clingy part because you know me, I'm not – clingy i'm probably more the other thing where i'm like in the independent and i'm like disassociating myself where i just do my own thing but the worthiness part where like i seek love like a love in a relationship but i always doubt myself and feel unworthy like before i met you or well before i dated you that is definitely something i had like i never ever thought about relationships but when i actually do sit down or watch a tv drama where i'm like oh that looks like something that I would enjoy or I would like to have a relationship like that. But then the thought after that is always like, I'll never get something like that. I'm not worthy of something like that. And that was something that was a common occurrence. So I think that is true. That sounds so fucked up. Like the men- like the mentality behind it, which is... Well, it's like your whole entire life, you growing up, You've I have never seen... Like my whole entire family, even my like not the immediate family just the family in general yeah everyone was broken like Mm. there was no family where they've stayed together like they're either divorced they've had an argument separated like they found like not second wife but like another person on the side yeah like it was all that i've never experienced firsthand what an actual happy family was. Yeah, like a stable family. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. another reason where I have never witnessed that is because I was also not allowed out. So I, d- I couldn't uh. go to friends' houses, which is probably the only other way I could see that, but I couldn't go to a friend's house. I wasn't allowed to. I had to study. I had to do all these extracurriculars. So it's like I've never witnessed it, so it might not be true to me. Yeah, no, it makes sense. So I can see how that comes through. And can influence your relationships. But I wouldn't say it influenced my relationship. It influenced my mindset on what a relationship could be. Whether that's like love or friendship. But yeah, like one thing. This was a a separate conversation I had with my friend. And he was just saying like considering your background and your upbringing and all that. It was like I'm actually surprised how... How do you even say it? Like how well you've kind of brought yourself or how well you've grown. Because a lot of people, I'm not saying that everyone's like this, but there there is a common thing where people with bad upbringing, like bad parenting, bad experience at home, they may end up, I don't know, resenting that kind of lifestyle and just doing different things where, you know, they, they don't, see self-worth and they do a lot of things that show that yeah they just derail so what your friend was basically saying is they end up being fucked well no they've chosen they've chosen a fucked direction where they do drugs or they go fuck themselves or Or you know what i mean party a lot yeah just there's no there's no clear mindset as to life yeah and he was like, it's actually really good that you came to your senses really early in life and you never went, took that path. And yeah. I was thinking about it and I was like, yeah, that's pretty true. And yeah, like I can see some of these styles in terms of how it shaped me into the way that I became knowing what's right, what's the like best way to take things. But I think it's because I've just had this from such a young age that I knew that I had no one to rely on and I only relied on myself so that I just everything is just you know I supported myself and I didn't allow myself to crumble because I didn't have a chance to crumble yeah so another question on that is is yeah you were by yourself you had to support yourself but at the same time it's more like how did you know what direction what choices that you had to take to basically guide yourself because what your friend was saying is true because, yes, you've come from that kind of background, but at the same time it's like, well, yeah, you're by yourself, but how do you know what is right, what is wrong, what is... I have no answer for that. I I honestly think there was nothing to tell me that 
I needed to keep going. Like, obviously, there were some things that, like, days where I was just like, you know, what's the point? No, I'm not even worthy in this world. Like, I definitely had those points in time when I was younger. But I don't know, something within myself naturally was just like, you just got to keep going. Like, you just can't give up. Maybe that's the, the other end of the spectrum of your parents saying, you can't be weak, you can't give up, you can't do that. So maybe that was something that pushed me through. But And that's a really important thing. And I think this is semi-off topic, but a lot of people don't realize from outside the skin. They just think, oh, yeah, you're just a, a fucking happy, bubbly person you know what i mean like and even for me like people would just be oh yeah you you're chill you you got this and that you're you're fine but it's like well you don't know what shoes we've had to basically walk until you've sat in my shoes and wore my shoes you would know exactly how i've been brought up or the shit that i've been through yeah and i think that's the same thing for you a lot of people don't realize that kind of shit that you've had to deal with yeah and in terms of how you were shaped in, I guess, from an earlier upbringing and how you sort of gotten to where you've gotten to now, like in, in my experiences from that Asian culture background, it's like we were brought up to be a certain way, i.e. focus on work, focus on money because money is what makes you live. That's what makes you survive. That's mm. what, you know, education is is what, gives you wealth yeah yeah i think that's true so like a part of me that didn't you know go crazy and go out partying day to day which i did have that life a little bit but i'll expand on that a little bit later but yeah i think the reason why i didn't do all those kind of things even though i did end up with some friends who all about sex all about that kind of stuff but it's just been so strictly ingrained in my mind that those are the wrong things, not the right thing to do, that maybe I was too scared to step out of that lane, even though, like, once I moved up to Brisbane, my mum here is a lot more lenient, but because that's already been ingrained in me for, like, what, 12 years of my life, 15 years of my life, that I was like, nah, it's a bit wrong to go and do stuff like that. Yeah, because you're trying to readjust yourself to a new lifestyle, but... How does that all have any correlation to the attachment styles specifically for relationships? Because if you look at our results, or not even results, but just what we got, does that have any play or correlation to our relationship? Because I think just based off what we both got, it seems like we have a very similar result. Really? Did well, <laughs> I don't think so. No, Did I'm you, freaking dis- disorganized? Yeah, no, no. But if you look at the square, the attachment style. Yeah. We're both on that. You mean for a relationship, like the blue partner yeah. part? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, we're both on that same scale. Yeah, I know. Like, what I was going to say, like, what I was going to lead to is similar to what you're saying, like, how you're operating, how you see things. I think that, yes, has an influence. And they also. I think this would be a different topic, but how I feel is everyone has a different personality and they grow up like they were born with a personality. And I think I was born to be someone who can just understand situations and know what to do, especially in challenging times. So that I think I've said in previous podcasts before that for us, our relationship I've experienced all the shit things. Like, I've seen and witnessed what a shit relationship looks like. So that what I'm doing now is know where all the wrong and red flags are so that it allows us to take things in better directions and know how to do better and instead of walking the same path of what I've witnessed. Yeah. If you get what I mean? Yeah, it makes sense. Whereas yeah. there are some people out there who may not have realized that yet. They just – it could be that self-worth thing. They might think that they're not worthy of a good relationship. So they they had like, same person, same person who had the ex- same experience when they were growing up, but they don't have the self-worth to be like – I'm in a toxic relationship, I need to get out. Mm. And that would just stay in there and just be like, if I get out, I may not find another better relationship. Whereas for me, if I'm in a toxic relationship, which I partially have sort of experienced, I'm just like, nah, see you later. Yeah, because you've experienced it. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? It's all experience at the end. And of like the day. I've experienced it for so long, like not directly to me, but just experience as in witnessing it. I definitely know when I don't want that shit. That makes sense because obviously, like we were saying before, experience in life and experience is what dictates and molds. Well, I think feel. like in terms of this attachment style. Yes, it can show you who you are and how your upbringing is, but I think it really has, your personality has a big effect on how it molds into your partner relationship. Mm. Like, there are some of these things here that are common signs. I can see in friendships, like, in friendships, there are a lot of times that it's like, I feel like, it's not that I don't trust people or I don't trust my friends. But it takes a lot for me to be like, okay, to I open can. Up. No, it's like to lean on someone. Mm. I think that's the biggest thing for me, I, because I'm just I've just been a person who just leans on myself. Like if I need something, like it's not something like, oh, can you help me carry this thing to the car or something like that. It's like actual life things where I need to lean on someone. I don't do that easily. Yeah. Like I even until this day, I I can't that easily and i don't know what it was but something about you has made it easy for me to lean on you and that's why i think my partner score is really good and really secure and maybe it's affected because of how you are you're a very secure person in terms of attachment attachment style where you said like you're very open you tell you talk about your emotions you talk about the problems and you're very open in that way and i think that that molded really well to my personality and my attachment style. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And I think in terms of talking about like friendships, me in the past, I was very, I was kind of different in terms of how I like, similar to you in terms of trusting people, but at times I would trust people too quickly and that obviously led into problems. Do you have an example? It's like gauging the wrong people. Just lack of experience, right? It's just like, well, being friends with a certain character and then realizing that that person was backstabbing you or mm. talking shit about you or was taking advantage of you. And that's all comes down to experience, right? Until you experience it, then you can gauge what that situation is. But even now, like, I don't have many friends where I actually vibe with on a serious, deep yeah. level. Yeah, and like... The conflicting thing, the, how I was saying that I have conflicting feelings and stuff, that is also true. So even though I said I don't trust people easily or – it's not trust. I would say I don't lean on people easily. But once I do, I feel like I w- I'm like a, a waterfall. Like you open that gate and all the water crushes out and I would just blurt everything. Like every problem that I have. I will, you know, talk about it and be open and all that, which I think you would know, like, knowing you and being with you, every problem that I have, well, not every, but, like, the problems that I do want to talk about and stuff, we're quite open and I would just, you know, just be an open book. Mm. But it takes a lot to get there. And I think that's a challenge that I, like, it's a good thing and it's a, it's a bad thing because obviously when you want to build a friendship, like just talking about friendships, you need to have trust there. Like with any relationship, I think our relationship works well because we have that trust there and I can be an open book. But with friendships, I'm always leaning towards that side where I don't want to rely or I don't want to lean on someone. Like I'm, it's not that I don't trust them. It's more like you're ingrained. To be in the, like independent yeah. and by yourself. Yeah. It's like my contingency plan, I guess. Like say one day that friend disappeared or that friend didn't want to be my friend anymore. It's like I still have myself. Yeah. No, like, that makes sense. Yeah. Can you actually change your style? Like, Yeah. I actually Googled this. This is only based off the last time when we did the personality test and it said that you actually can't change your personality answer because it's something that should be from when you're born. Um, which is similar to this. This is something that has been formed from between your first years of living. So I was thinking maybe that doesn't change. But I feel like it can change and I was Googling it and apparently you can actually change it. And again, that's just due to life experiences, 
you know, if you discovered that you're very clingy and say your partners, like your previous partners have all told you the same thing, it might actually, you know, hit a bell Mm. for you and you're like, okay, maybe I am clingy and I need to change things up and become better, have more self-worth and, you know, work on myself. Yeah, and that comes down to character too because obviously if you're stubborn or you don't want to accept what's actually happening in front of you, then obviously that's going to dictate which direction. But in theory, you can always work on yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You can always better yourself, you know, improve yourself. So if someone wants to give you that feedback, that's feedback, constructive feedback that you can self-improve from that point. So definitely agree and I think you can can definitely mould your style. Mold as in yours working with mine kind of thing? It can be in, in both ways because you can mold yourself to your relationship as in your intimate relationship, but you can also change mm. your style depending on what feedback, constructive, whatever it is. Mm. And I think in that, like just off the back of you saying that, I think yours has actually molded into mine because you know how I was saying before that I never saw that. I had the potential of having a worthy or great relationship. But because you're so secure, you're that person who has given me that light to be like, you can have that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that explains why you you feel so secure. Yeah. Like, like this is legit dead on secure. Like you can't even get any higher than that anymore. It's like far left or something, right? That's yeah, the, the, yeah. Yeah, that's the same thing with Vine. Yeah. If you th- just dial back, like you were mentioning that how disorganized you were just in general and to have a relationship that is so secure, which is on the opposite end, mm. that's pretty – Yeah, that's impressive. Because if you look at my dots, my dots are like all in the red and all in the other corner, like the total opposite corner, but partner, it's like dead on, like perfect. Which is really good, actually. Yeah. So, yes, it can change, and it also depends on the type of partners that you end up with and friendships that you have around you, your life experience, and all that can help you shape or change the way attachment style is. But yeah. it's also willing to work on yourself if you have these things that you can work on. Like, it's not problems. It's just things that you can work on. Yeah, of course. And it's just experience, right? Just experience in terms of what will mold you I was also willing to change and willing to yeah. better yourself. It's not like, yes, experiences are important, but having the ability to recognize what you need to work on is also important. Mm. Do you think, think it's something worthy to just give it a crack for the listeners? It's very interesting to do these kind of quizzes where you get to know yourself better as an individual, but also your relationship as well. Yeah, like just to see how you work with other people and maybe explain why sometimes you're hesitant to do something mm. or you're not 100% sure to commit to a friendship, like reasons behind that. And it's really good to kind of reflect on why these things happen rather than saying, oh, I never end up finding good friends or something like that. And it's like, is it something that you can work on yourself too? Yeah. yeah. We'll leave the link in the show notes of the quiz that we did. But definitely give it a go and also thank you to the person who recommended it. Yeah, thanks for sending these topics. We love it. So keep them coming. Yeah, keep them coming. And that's about it. I think we'll leave it at that. Okay. Well, (laughs) thanks, guys, and we'll speak to you then. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. If you have reached to the end, we really appreciate you for tuning in. And if you'd like what you hear, please share it with your friends or family, and subscribe to our podcast on whatever platform you are listening to. Make sure you share any topics you'd like us to cover or questions you might have to our Instagram. Slide it into our DMs. Bigger, bigger. You can also stay in the loop of all the behind the scenes and the release of our new episodes there too. Our Instagram is Ask the Duo Podcast. That's A S K T H E. D-U-O-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. Man, feels like I'm in a spelling bee competition right now. (laughs) All right, that's it for now, and we'll see you back here for our next 
episode. Bye. See ya. Bye.